Welcome to Politics Done Right. My name is Egberto Willis, your host. Welcome and good morning, Houston. Good morning, Harris County. Good morning, Texas. Good morning, United States. Good morning, the world. How are all my peeps doing? I trust that everybody's doing fine. Well, we are off from doing a live a live broadcast from Black Hole uh, Coffee House yesterday. Of course, you have your little kinks as we get all these things together. But, you know, we had a whole lot of fun seeing the entire team out there and some good people drinking some great coffee and having some great food. Howard, you pulled it off una vez más. One more time. Well, the tin cans and string mostly held together yesterday. Until I figured out, oh, I've got a loose plug, which causes to lose their internet. <laughs> well, besides the loose screw in my head, usually it's uh, the loose plug at the uh, black hole. But man, did we have a good time or what? Yes. Got to get out and see some people, got to get out and interact with our public, our supporters, our folks were there. I got to thank Stuart for being there. Also, Marlo, Steve Hunter. It was just a, it was a blast. It really was. It was so cool. If I could ever stop worrying about okay is my internet gonna hold up then i'll be okay and i also want to send a special shout out to our friend steve over at adt who made a donation there on site and that was pretty cool too that was great i mean it was uh, i i enjoyed being there i mean we got there early and and did all the setup but i mean um even as I, you know, I, I, last night i had to go to sleep early because getting up that early driving to that side of town and I mean, it was it was tough, but you know what, man? It was well worth it because we got to do more of that, Howard. We got to do more of that. That's in the plans. I want to plan doing a, a more of these things. The next thing I would like to try to do, attempt to do, is a drive-through coffee stop where we pick a parking lot somewhere off the freeway where you exit the freeway, turn in, get a cup of coffee on KPFT, and then drive on out. But I think that's I like gonna be that. Cool. Yeah, I like that's, that. Uh, that's in my brain here. Um, the, and I also want to especially thank Jack, who is back here at the station, losing his mind every time we lost connection. <laughs> and Stuart well, for rescuing everybody. So Stuart rescued us yesterday a couple of times from the from the studio. But uh, it was it was over, overall, it was a pretty good time. And I'm, I hope that anybody who came over and participated had a good time, too. And Steve from ADT, thank you so much for your donation, which leads me into we are in Fund Drive. We are still in Fund Drive. So make that donation at 713-526-5738, extension number one. Get yourself a summer sizzle t-shirt. Uh, the flames on it, well, you know, yeah, it's a summer sizzle, all right, especially the weather. And the flames on it, well, you'll fit right into everything else. Jack, what you got today, man? Good morning, Egberto. How are Good you? Good morning, Jack. Thank you yeah. for yesterday, though, Jack. You really kept things in, in the control room going smoothly, brother. I appreciate that. Thank you. Half the job is just showing up. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, yeah, we're in Fun Drive. Please donate 713-526-5738, extension one. Ladies, your opinion on issues is important, and we welcome you to call in to Politics Done Right. Please, you are important, and we need you here. Uh, the other thing is, uh, since I came back to Texas after taking care of my dear mom, uh, I've noticed I haven't heard a mockingbird sing. Are the mockingbirds singing? Uh, that's our state bird. And, you know, I would like some feedback on that. When was the last time you heard a mockingbird go through its repertoire? Mm, well, it's That's been a while. Interesting. I, that is, well, what, are they, what are they seeing anyway? Does it sound like Elvis? Well, not quite <laughs> like Elvis, but, you know, they, they go through every other bird's calls. Ah. If you sit there and listen to them, they go through every other kind of bird's calls. That's and I'm wondering, have the birds stopped singing because of climate change? That's a possibility. That's All right, a well, let's, let's, let's give the show back to Egberto here. 
I mean, well, we are tempted to hijack it and do something else, but uh, it's like I love you guys, man. I mean, I I, I love that ba- that initial banter. I, I I love it. Anyway, folks, uh, 713-526-5738, extension number two, if you'd like to talk to me immediately or go ahead and hit extension number one to contribute or go to kpft.org and uh, please support the program. Anyway, let's get busy. We have a program today. We got a program today. Well, we have a program every day. So here's the deal. Here's the first of all, I want to welcome Melanie Keelan from Barcelona, Spain with us here every morning or almost every morning and afternoons as well. Thank you so kindly. You are very much appreciated as a member of our PDR Posse. Anyway, folks, today's subject is important. The first, uh, we have three topics. Dean Phillips challenges Dems. He thinks that there should be a primary. What do you think? I have. I uh, Look, I am all over the place on this. I just want what's good for everybody. That's my my thing. It's not about, not. Uh, it's simply about what's best for everybody. Hannity got it right. Yes, Sean Hannity got it right. I want to play that as well. Blaspheming evangelicals. Not, I'm not talking about my rank and file Christians, folks. You know, uh, you're doing your work. You're out there helping the poor, feeding the feeding the hungry, and healing the sick. But there are some folks who have turned the economy into just me, 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 me. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. 713-526-5738, extension number one to donate, extension number two to talk to me. Uh, so, folks, we have to remain engaged. Uh, as you know, I, I spoke earlier about Donald Trump having been indicted and what does it really mean? Look, it means a lot, but also it means that we are going to be taken up with Donald Trump for the next several months, if not years, and talking Trump, 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 Trump. And in the process of doing that, there's so much that is going to be left behind. There's so much that's going to need, that needs to be done, need to be talked about, that won't be uh, spoken about. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to make you a promise right this minute. And that promise is this. We are not going to hyperventilate on Donald Trump. We're going to talk issues that matter to us all. And I want you to also tell me issues that matter to you and everybody else. Because I tell you what, we can't allow the media stream here to allow us to concentrate on an issue like, let's go ahead and say Donald Trump. And in the process, forget that there are hungry children, forget that the educational system is going to hell, forget about all these other issues because we're concentrating on Donald Trump. The plutocracy, the oligarchy, the, the, the corporatocracy, those in power would like us to simply Uh oh! I think the communists cut the lines on Egberto this morning. Oh, he was really? speaking some truth. Oh, there okay. you are. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know what happened there, but I'm back. I'm back. I'm go. back. Yeah. There we go. Uh, sometimes it's ha- commies up there. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure what happened, but I'm glad it came back. But folks, um, so let, let's let's be very sure, brothers. Let's not just concentrate on Trump. We have a lot to deal with. Let's go to Joe. Come on in, Joe, and then we'll move on. Hey, good morning. How are y'all? I'm fine, Joe. Talk to me, my brother. Oh, man. Um, yeah, you're right. Let's, let's not talk about Trump because that, that is what the establishment media wants you to That's all they want you to think about. But um, um, really, it said somebody said climate change. And, and, um, and I, I saw a graph the other day. You know, of course, you were inundated. Um, um, via the establishment media in all its forms with the idea that, that the world is burning and catching on fire and this is the hottest year on record. Well, what they're not telling you and what you can look up on NASA's own website is that water moisture is 30% higher in the atmosphere this year because of a volcano that erupted in the South Pacific and threw just huge clouds, huge volumes of H2O into the, into the atmosphere. And that's, and that, that has, um, has made this year a little uh, warmer than normal. There's that. And there, and there's also this graph they'd like to show around of the last 10 or 20,000 years climate. Well, I challenge you to, to Google and find this, um, this, this, um, graph that, um, that you can find if you just Google the last 500,000 years climate. The last 500,000 years of climate, more data, right? Bigger, longer timeline. 
if you look at it, you'll see that you'll see that um, you know there's some dramatic swoops upward, and then it comes back down and it goes for a few tens of thousands of years, and then it goes up, and then it trickles down for tens of thousands of years, and it goes up, and it trickles down for tens of thousands of years, and it does that about I don't know twelve or fifteen times, and then it goes up, and and that's where we are right now, right? That's now. And if you look at it in context of the last 500,000 years, well, is that out of line? No. This is a normal pattern that's been going on for half a million years, and, and the data is right in front of you. But, you know, that doesn't sell electric cars, and that doesn't transform the economy and take money from one set of people and give it to another set of oligarchs. So, you know, we're just not going to... Okay, Joe, you know, Joe, first of all, let me let you know that a lot of what you said is actually correct, all right? Now, now, now that I've said that, let me tell you what some of the issues are with climate change. Uh, do you know what gradients are and, and the, uh, the speed in, speed in, in gradients as well, right? Um, you are correct that we do go in cycles. We go in cycles of freezing and warming, etc. But what we have reached is a cycle where humanity exists, because again, the the uh, where where exists what what has happened for humanity to, to exist? We have done things like turned all those dead animals from millions of years and dead trees from millions of years. We've turned them into sequestered carbon, which leaves a particular balance in the air that you know that 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 is maintained now it is true that over time if uh, without man's control things like the forests and these other things will eventually burn again throw more carbon in the air and we'll go through all kinds of cycles again what we are saying those of us who not only believe in man-made climate change notice we're saying man-made climate change we realize that we are having an impact that speed up or slow down certain things and the question that i that i put out there is is it in our best interest to continue speeding things up in the cycle where we cannot adjust economics to run with what we are doing to climate? Can we adjust the, to the severity of these particular events that occur? So, I mean, uh, what happens in a lot of times is that when we are arguing these issues, we, we polarize ourselves and we allow the plutocrats like, in other words, you are with one set of plutocrats and it might seem like I'm with another set of plutocrats in that I want electrical energy, I want renewable energy, you are probably just fine with uh, fossil fuels because, hey, it's there and it's cheap and we can burn it at will. We shouldn't be in that kind of contention as I see it. We should be what oh. is best. Alberto. Yes, sir. I got, my, I got my hand up for a second. I want to just interject one thing. Yes, You're go ahead. Equation. You're missing half the equation, okay? And and as I drive around the northeast side of Houston, I see that other side of that equation. It's just glaringly simple. It's it, everywhere you go. What is the really, other side, sir? It, it it's these solar powered carbon sequestration units that we yes. we allow to be destroyed all around us in mass. What is that? Right? Tree. It's called Thank a you. tree. Yes. And 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 it's a solar powered carbon sequestration device. But it's, it's, Joe, and, and Joe, let me stop you because I got to go to Gonzalo. But let me stop you. You're right on that again. But let me just tell you because we did the math, right? The amount of trees that are necessary based on growth rates to cover the amount of additional cars and carbon producing things that we need, we, we are so far exceeding that you're correct that that is a, one of the best sequestration forms. Another sequestration form that is becoming carbonic right now is the oceans. The oceans are one of the biggest absorbers of carbon, but uh, carbon plus H2O, what does it create again? Carbonic acid. And what is carbonic acid doing to our animals? It's Go ahead. Carbonic. Carbolic acid, carbolic acid. It's right. So go ahead. So therefore, what, what I'm saying, Joe, is the following. We shouldn't be discussing and fighting about this issue as it's, it's, it's a polarization thing. You and I should be sitting down and say, how best to convert the economy 
from doing a net positive and throwing things up into the air that will, in fact, I think we'll all agree, modify climate and how can we have a smaller imprint to make sure that gradients are smaller. That's all I'm saying, sir. And I think if we can get there and stop the the, the, the ridiculous fight us, that the oil companies would like us to have and others would like us to have, we will have them. I don't want to get rid of oil. I mean, we use oil for more than just burning, brother. But, you know, but we have to get in some equitable place. Don't you agree that we have to come somewhere close to that? I do. And you, we should also recognize that the place that we're in right now, uh, as far as the data goes, is not that exceptional. It, I mean, uh, well, well, let me stop you with there for a second. It's not exceptional. Wait, Joe, listen to me. Listen to me on this one. I, I need you to understand this one. It's not exceptional over 10,000 years. It is exceptional over a hundred years. That's all I'm saying. If you take, and that is what I wish more scientists would just come out and say, that we can say this honestly. The, the problem isn't that this stuff wouldn't occur. If you look at it in the cycle over 10,000 years, hey, I get you, brother. But when we're talking about these changes over short times, that is when, I, when engineers talk about, we don't want large gradients. We don't want large gradients because bad things occur in large gradients. That's all. So, uh, so I'm with you that these changes occur over time, and I'm also uh, I'm, I'm trying to tell you also that we are in a sweet spot for humanity when we had that amount of carbon sequestration that we no longer have. And I'm saying this change occurs in a in a small amount of time. So if your fight should be, in my opinion, go ahead and talk about planting the trees. Go ahead and talking about we don't have to go crazy and just cut. Uh, cut oil like yesterday, but we have to do things in a manner that says we're going there. And eventually, I think we're going to have to have some sort of a and um, the environmentalists. Some of my environmentalist friends going to kill me here, but I think we're going to have to have some sort of a nuclear carbon sequestration process. In other words, we can't use oil to sequester carbon, but we can use nuclear to sequester. But again, I haven't thought this particular thing out. I'm just saying. Anyway, I got to go to Gonzalo. Give me a quick closer, Joe. Hey, Joe? The quick closer is, um, yeah, quit, quit, quit using climate change as a club to just beat beat everything with. I don't right? think, uh, okay, you know, Joe, I'm sorry. I want you to, I, I want you, uh, Joe, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to do me a favor. Instead of looking at climate change, folks that are beating your brow with as a, as a, a cushion, Let's uh, let's try to create that kind of a bridge, really, because you are a thinking person and more so than those folks that just say oil, oil, oil. So you can yeah, be a bridge. Raise it, raise it another level. Here, raise it to another level. These are just these are issues. The issue now right. is pro-establishment versus anti-establishment. Now, you and I, you and I can drink coffee on that because we agree we can drink coffee on that. OK. Yep. Well, I got thank you, brother. Have a good one, guys. See ya. Peace out. All right, let's go to Gonzalo. Come on in, Gonzalo. Buenos días, amigo. ¿Cómo estás, hermano? Uh, good, good. Uh, uh, I think Jack made a good point. Uh, you know, we slightly are realizing that the world is changing, and uh, we are already the Walking Dead. You, you have, you have watched the the Walking Dead, right? Yes. We are already the herd that are just trapped and follow the media with uh, uh, stories. Right. You know, uh, Trump's, uh, the war in Ukraine, and all the BS. Again. Yes. But we don't focus on the real deal. Uh, you, I know you are. You work in NASA. I mean, you said you work in NASA. Yes, you know I did. You know that the Russians are trying to conquer the moon. To yes. Look for water. So that's the plan. That's the real deal. So the governments are looking desperately for another planet because the car is broke. So I'm going to use my own example. Uh, you talk about the electric car and all that BS to me. My solution is keep my car. You can electrify all the cars, all the existing, uh, existing cars with battery. They're, of course, they are not going to be 
uh, efficient. Of course, they're not going to have the same power and the same autonomy, but you're going to save the planet. So for me, the electric car is another small curtain, like the, the trial, like the war in Ukraine, and the real deal is Mars that is not very uh, promising, but the moon, our natural satellite. And that's the, the story, you know, the ones that we should look at. The Russians are already uh, trying to get there. Nobody talked about that. I just read that somewhere else. You know, Grandma, the, the Cuban communists, they focus on that. And that could be true. You know, I read from all the sources. I read El País, and I read the same BS, like here. Trump, 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 uh, war in Ukraine on the other side. Uh, let's concentrate on the hummingbird, on the on Houston that is going to be a swimming pool soon if the heat uh, continues striking us. Uh, have you heard of uh, Jupiter Project? Jack Dufresne passed away uh, in a few years ago. Have you heard of him? Egberto. Downtown, uh, war in Ukraine on the other side. Uh, let's not afraid on the hummingbird, on the on the heat uh, continues driving us. Um, have you heard of uh, Jupiter Project? Jack Dufresne passed away uh, two years ago. Have you heard of him? Okay, that's very strange. Egberto, are you here? Have those yeah, communists no. have you have those communists taken your line again? Okay, well that's uh very strange. It's echoing back and forth here. Jack, what you got? Let's hear your thoughts while we uh, reconnect with Egberto here. I you know uh they do talk. We are in climate change. You know, it's hard to deny anymore. We've had 30 years of of the administrations uh, denying climate change. And and yes, and yes, the earth goes through cycles, but it hasn't gone through cycles with eight billion people. How many millions and of cars out there and lawnmowers and weed whackers and you know, is the earth going to go down to the internal combustion system? The, I mean, the internal combustion engine? I mean, is that going to be our downfall? We've been pointing you know, out for some time now no. the complicity. Oh, no. Can you hear me now, guys? We can hear you now. Okay. We, we, got we had some sort of a, I, I guess, as you said, somebody took over. I had to jump to another mic system in real time but we got well, it we got it going. there was a disturbance in the universe we were talking about the universe taking over and it tried to take over but we wrestled it away from it and now we got egberto back yes we're we're back i i want to what gonzalo uh, you know i uh, look i i want people to understand that uh yeah we need to get away from uh, simply and all of the times on the subject. So in, in that regards, I see what Gonzalo is saying. And, and what Joe says about the climate, if, if we stop believing that, uh, Americans are not as smart as they really are, things would be better. But when you are trying to control people, right? You go ahead and, uh, you know, you only tell a piece of the story. And when you only tell a piece of a story, you allow a vacuum to get created. And a vacuum with all kinds of crazy stories to come in, right? So I think um, when Joe comes in and he talks about the pattern over 10,000 years, he's right. But I'm talking about a pattern in any 100-year segment. And that is where the issue uh, particularly is. And, and that is where if we had all more information, we could sit back here and, and do things as they should. But anyhow, folks, 
Uh, sorry for that little mishap. I'm using a different microphone now. I have no idea what happened to that first microphone, but let's get busy. I want to talk to you a little bit about the Democratic, uh, what Dean, Dean, uh, Phillips of the Democratic Party had to say. And I'm going to play it for you right now. And then we will get busy again. Congressman Dean Phillips of Minnesota. He has an inconvenient message. He has a message that the Democratic establishment does not want to hear. He has a message that most Democrats are concerned about, but he also has a message that every single Democrat is thinking about. And you know what? While everybody is concerned about President Biden's age, it's not about President Biden's age at all. It's about the perception that the body politic has with regards to whether they want to elect this person again. And you can wish something on to anybody. You can make it seem as if it's the only option. But if ultimately the majority doesn't want you, and when I say the majority in America, it doesn't mean a popular majority. It means the majority in the appropriate states that give you an electoral college win. If that isn't there, then you can't win. And this is, in fact, the time that Democrats need to be honestly discussing this issue, not with attacks, not with retributions or anything like that, but with eyes wide open. It pains me to even bring this subject up because, again, we have a President Biden who personally, I didn't support initially. I voted for him, but I didn't support him initially because he wasn't sufficiently progressive for me and for my wing of the party. However, I must say that he has proven to be much more progressive than any one of us otherwise would have thought him to be. And as such, I find him an acceptable president for 2024. And if there were a, the ability to bring a more progressive president in for the next four years, I would support it. However, I have a very hard time right now seeing the pathway that we could actually have to bring in a more progressive candidate that can actually both win a Democratic primary not and even if they don't win the democratic primary not damage the prospects of a democratic win and likewise not ensure that there is a republican win and 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 the thing about it is that republican could be trump but the truth of the matter is while we are all banking on trump to win there's a possibility that something happens that kicks him out of the game and i believe any younger candidate with a narrative, a false narrative, albeit, could actually, based on the numbers right now, be problematic for the Democrats. So, number one, making the assumption that it's definitely going to be Trump to, to win is an issue. And secondly, thinking that those four states that Biden is down in right now, can turn around. It's a possibility. But we have to have eyes wide open and we have to see what the alternatives are. It's not the person. The fight should never be the individual. It should always be the collective, the American collective. I want you to listen to Dean Phillips. Uh, he doesn't sound at all malicious. He doesn't sound like he wants to stir the pot. He's just saying, I have the courage to come out here and say, let's start asking questions. Let's listen to this and then we'll take it on the other side. Minnesota Congressman Dean Phillips is calling for a more competitive Democratic primary, saying voters don't want a coordination, they want a competition. Phillips, who is in his third term representing suburban Minneapolis, 
me tell you a few, a little bit about him. He lost his father in Vietnam. After business school at the University of Minnesota, Mr. Phillips joined the family business, Phillips Distilling. He went on to help build Talenti Gelato into a top selling gelato brand and also opened Penny's Coffee, a small business in the Twin Cities. And he is, like I said, in his third term. Phillips has denounced, by the way, the no labels attempt to field a third party ticket, but he has called for serious Democratic primary challengers to President Biden. And last week, he met with Democratic donors in New York about the race, and potentially entering it himself if no one else does. Congressman Phillips, welcome to the press. Good to be with you. Chair. I sum this up right. You are not interested in being a candidate for president technically yourself right now, or are you? That's a fair statement. Okay. What, what I'm technically and legitimately doing is representing. I'm a representative and I'm representing what I believe to be the majority of the country that wants to turn the page. Tired of the meanness and the fear mongering of Donald Trump. Would like to see Joe Biden, and a, a wonderful and remarkable man, yeah. pass the torch, uh, cement this extraordinary legacy. You don't want him to run for re-election. I, be, I believe what's in the best interest of the country, and by the way, this is not how everybody thinks, but I do believe a majority wants to move on. I hear from way too many people. Now, this is The news was that I was meeting with donors. The fact is I listen to normal Americans every day and my own feelings. And is the this fact all about is, age? This is, no, no. This is about how people feel. By the way, it's not about what's real all the time. It's about how people feel. People want to turn the page. As a Democrat, I adore Joe Biden. He saved this country. He can cement his legacy. The call to action is to ask the president to pass the torch. There is an extraordinary bench, extraordinary bench of people ready to go, proximate, who would you prepared, like to see in position. This I would like to see a moderate governor, hopefully from the heartland, from one of the four states that Democrats will need. But I'm speaking truth. That's my job. My duty mm -hmm. is to the people I represent, but also to represent the mass majority. And, and, and I just, I want to say this about Democrats. It's really important. Joe Biden right now is down seven points in the four swing states that will decide the next election. He has historically mm -hmm. low approval numbers, Chuck. Eight, there are about 55% of Democrats would like to see an alternative. I can keep going down the no, list. The I, fact I, of the matter is everything you're saying, we've all heard in right. private as well. Why do you think it's all private? Why do you think this, this hand wringing hasn't is only really gone public for you. It's very simple. People are focused on self-preservation and not principle. There is no political reward in the United States right now for simply speaking the truth. Look at what happened to my Republican colleagues who dared do the right thing and support the Constitution. Support the Constitution. But you, you believe the Hunter Biden news actually reinforces this even more, don't you? I don't think the president is corrupt. I think the investigation will show that. But, and this is the important part, it's the image, it's, it's what the news will do. We know what era we live in in partisanship. It is the attachment to the president. Most people aren't watching Meet the Press every Wouldn't weekend. Wouldn't this happen to any and Democratic nominee? It probably will, and it saddens me. And, okay. I'm, that's, and these are the people I'm trying to represent right now, Chuck, the people who are sick and tired of this nonsense. We have a duopoly, we have a political industrial complex that if they agree on anything, it's the status quo. And by the way, now I have trouble with Donald Trump. I do not have trouble with Trumpers who are trying to find somebody mm -hmm. to change the system. The, I, the hardware is fine. The software is a problem. The people with whom we're populating the system, and I understand the need for transparency. We need to restore faith in government. We should do that in a thoughtful, meaningful, legitimate, and bipartisan manner, and it can be done. We need leaders in the next generation to do so, and I'm just simply expressing that point of view that I think is shared by a majority of Americans. What can President Biden do to reassure you he is up to a second term? I'm not saying he's not up to a second term. What I'm saying is look at the data. I listen. My job is to listen. I do it every single day back in Minnesota. Right. Can you change the, the data? That's the challenge. I, I come from the marketing world. You just explained my background. Sometimes you got a product that is extraordinary, meets the moment, you think is going to be the next big thing, and it just doesn't happen. And in business, you got to recognize it because the data speaks the truth. The data is speaking the truth right now. And if nobody's willing to talk about it before, it's too late. That's the yeah. key. The case not against too late. what you're talking about is basically the history of our lifetimes, okay? You go back, the last four sitting presidents who had serious primary challengers, that party lost the White House. But so like LBJ, why did, why did they, we can go back to LBJ, yeah. but also Gerald Ford, Jimmy Carter, Ronald George H.W. Bush. But why were they primaried? Because people recognized they were weakened, the country was ready to turn the page. Now we can have a, we could have an hour debate on this subject. I understand that. I don't want to be. I ran for Congress in 26 after the 2016 election. Mm -hmm. I woke up that next morning. My teenage daughters were in tears. I promised them I would do something. I'm not going to be quiet now. Five years later, when the same trauma 
could be afflicting the country if Donald Trump is reelected. So I will do nothing to ensure that Donald Trump is reelected. But Chuck, it's really important yeah. that people know this. I'm doing just the opposite. And if people aren't well, willing right now to have that yeah. conversation, to have the discussion, and most importantly, yeah. to present some alternatives, how in the world are we going to look at these numbers and say everything's okay? But hopes and dreams and prayers, I love them. They don't solve gun violence. They don't give health insurance to Americans, right? And they sure as heck won't change the numbers that I'm seeing right now. Uh, have you talked to Joe Manchin? You want him to run in a Democratic primary instead of as an independent for no labels? I want anybody who wants to run, Joe Manchin, Cornell West, mm -hmm. any of the governors. You want him in the primary? In the primary. That's why we have primaries, because that doesn't undermine the likelihood of returning, in this case, a Democrat to the White House. So that is the key. Enter the primary, my friends. Everybody who is on the bench, meet the moment. Don't wait five years. We need you now. Again, I don't think there is a malicious bone in Dean Phillips body. I think he is showing a legitimate concern that many have, that many are fearful to put out there into the ethos. But kudos to him for bringing it up and ensuring that we actually have a discussion. So discuss away, folks. Let's really look at things, not the way we had hoped they would be, but the way they are. Let's look at what he says, the data. Sometimes you can have the best product that doesn't sell. As an engineer myself, I've gone through of that. I've made the best check-in software long time ago that never sold. And it was good. It was much better than many things out there. So let's look at things the way they are and not the way we hope they would be. Let's look at how they are, how they're likely to be in the future. Absolutely so. Absolutely so. Anyway, folks, I want to go to the caller in a minute. Anonymous is want to talk corporate issues. But before I go there, I want to ask you guys to give us a call at 713-526-5738. Hit extension number one to contribute right now. We don't have any contributions for politics done right. And if you want to keep hearing this program on politics done right, folks, we are going to need to hear from you. So please give us a call at 713-526-5738, extension number one. Likewise, folks, you can go to kpft.org and uh, support the program uh, there. Please make sure to say this is for politics, uh, and, and not for politics and right, but in the name of politics and right, so that folks can understand that we what that we are that we are viable here at this hour on this station. So folks, 713-526. Five seven three eight one hundred dollars for the for the uh, summer sizzle t shirt one hundred dollars for the uh, politics and right t shirt remember you don't have to pay this all at once coffee with Egberto a two hundred fifty dollar donation which can cover uh, a little under a day worth of uh, rather hour worth of our time here uh, please consider doing that I'll go have some great coffee with you wherever you want to have some coffee seven one three five two six Five seven three. Let's go to Anonymous. Come on in, Anonymous. Anonymous. Let's see. Are you there, Anonymous? Yes, sir. Talk to me, sir. Egberto. Estoy, estoy aquí. Talk to me. Soy poeta. No soy y poeta. Decirte algo. Okay. okay. It's mostly what I have experienced in the uh, corporate world is the desire to innovate, sort of like be graphite to where you could, you know, just slide real easily. But at the same time, they want the opposite, which is a diamond a fixed structure that they can, you know, implement. And I believe we're having the same situation in terms of politics. Do you understand? Uh, give, give me a little bit more context. I'm saying that people want to have something like law and order, but at the same time, we need to have some facility to innovate. I agree. You understand? Yes, I do. Okay. Well, those are contradictory. 
And that's part of the problem. Now, I have a son who does not believe in God. Uh -huh. He does not believe in religion and all of that. And I'm trying to tell him at the same time, hey, like I was telling a friend back in the 80s, it's not a matter of politics. Politics is not going to solve the problem because it has to come from within. Do you okay. believe? Yes. Let, 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 me, let me first say, uh, uh, it depends on how you qualify politics. What I say is politics solves everything, right? Politics is the interaction that we have as a, as a system, as a community to create the laws to make, to, you know, it, it's about policy, right? Creating the policies that make us work. You are absolutely correct in that the policies that work best, well, the policies have to come from within, right? We have to want, we have to have that. Your son may not believe in religion, but does your son believe that everybody should have access to health care? Uh, your son may not believe in some sort of a political philosophy, but he may believe that he wants what's better for his neighbor. You know, so uh, the, the, the second part came from within. Uh, the other part is externalities, right? I don't believe in religion. That is something imposed by somebody else. I don't believe in politics per se. That is something imposed by somebody else until I realize that coming from within policies is what create politics. Well, one of the problems that I have is that there is a whole lot of nitpicking and perhaps, um, you know, it just the same way that people describe politics at work, and that is backstabbing. But mostly what it has to do with is not telling the truth. Okay. I, uh, if we tell the you... If we tell the truth, okay, mm -hmm. as far as we understand it, okay, then perhaps we could get away with saying maybe, maybe not. Who knows? But a lot of people actually pretend that they are telling the truth when they are not, and that includes Donald Trump. Right. Now, I want, to, I want to qualify that because what you said is crazy. It's important. To, uh, OK, it's about not, you know, uh, not telling the truth, etc. Here's the thing. If you sit down with 95, 99 percent of Americans or anybody from any place and you put out in, and, and you're believed by those people. In other words, those people have some sort of a trust in you. And you give a logical explanation about something, right? Uh, most people will sit with you. They'll have the civil conversation. They'll believe you if you've proven your point, And they are susceptible to change if their beliefs system were wrong. But we have, and, and this is where I was talking about psychopaths and our, and our tendency to follow psychopaths. You don't need a whole lot of psychopaths to put people on the wrong path. And that is what has happened throughout history, right? Uh, and a lot of that has to do with means of communication and how fast communication can move, etc. And the laws that we have to protect against psychopaths when psychopaths are leading many of those creating the laws. So my thing is a slow process of earning trust and educating others, right? And with the, with the ability to remove what I call the carnalities of life. And the carnalities of life are, um, you know, uh, let's say, uh, I want to use, a, 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 you know, thinking that one particular group is just inherently against you or that some particular group is inherently evil. When we get away from that, if, if we can teach that that doesn't make sense, but that the psychopath can use that to put divisions and create and prevent trust among people, that is the goal. One of the goals that I hope to do with the projects that I do with my writing, with my blocking, with my talking, is to try to get people there. We don't need to fear other people. We don't need to, I mean, when you talk about what's truth and coming from within you know, I don't care if your, your, your son is a religious or not. You know, some people will look at religion and say, what is, it's not for me. 
but that's not what's going to feed people, etc. We, we, it's policy that, that feeds people. I care what your, your son's policies are for his fellow man. So that's where I'm at, uh, Anonymous. Continue, and then we have to go to the next person. Uh, really? Go ahead, sir. Well, the main thing is one of the problems that I have with my son is that he wants to complete my sentences. Okay? <laughs> but I'm telling him he wants to tell me what I'm talking about. Right. When really, he doesn't understand at all what I'm talking about. Okay? And part of the problem with what I have with politics in part is that I believe we've gotten away from the basics, which is one of them is telling the truth. What do we know? What do we understand? And I think, you know, I, I try to explain to the folks at my company where I used to work, which was the reason I used to contribute to KPFD and no longer can, because I'm retired. It was like take four four uh, um, four gloves, okay? Yes. And you can make a little pyramid, right? Three on the bottom, one on the top. Yes. And they're all equal, all on the same, you know, same thing on all of the sides. And what I used to say is, okay, if we want to look at quality, okay, we have to look at it from all sides. And we can go anywhere. And the thing is, is again, like I was saying about... Hey, I got it. Uh, look, I, I, I am with you. Hey, Anonymous, I am with you. And I, I get the gist of your conversation. I just have to go because we've on with, 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 with one caller for a lot of minutes here with others. We're in, but let me just tell you. First of all, as far as your son is concerned, finishing your sentences, when you get a pause, look at your son and just tell your son, hey, I'm going to listen. To, let's make a deal. I'm going to listen to your entire statement and you listen to my entire statement. Don't interrupt. We have to start learning to listen to each other. I have to learn that myself. Have, and except for interrupting you to tell you I got to go to another person now. Uh, I, I notice that I make sure to listen and I don't listen waiting to answer, but I listen waiting to understand. So thank you. Anonymous, please keep listening. Please keep calling. Even if you cannot uh, currently give to KPFT, please remember to tell other folks we are we can have the discussion here. It's worthwhile giving. We are here to have this kind of discussion. You're not going to have this anywhere else. So thank you so kindly, Anonymous, for calling. Gracias, Alberto. Muchas gracias, hermano. Tenga buen día. All right, let's go to Joe again. I think that's the same Joe. Come on in, Joe. Good morning, Alberto. How are you? Oh, no, this is not the same Joe. This is my brother, Joe. Come on in. Talk to me, brother. <laughs> hey, when is Pacifica decided that it's going to compete with CNN and MSNBC? I mean, this is horrible. You can't get Cornell West. You can't get Robert Kennedy Jr. on the, on the station. What What's going on? I mean, oh, he was okay, on the Joe. Joe, let me let me answer your question because I, I know you and I spoke about this beforehand. Because yeah. I, first of all, I want I'm your not, audience to discuss it. Yet. Okay, I tell you what, Joe. Joe, I tell you what because yeah. I think I am going to do that. Okay, I said I wasn't going to do that because I do not agree with uh, with Brother Kennedy. Okay, I don't. I'm honest. I come out and I honestly say things, but it's not, okay. it's not about me, Joe. It's not about me. It's about you. It's about everybody else. You think that I need to play Robert Kennedy or, or, or get Robert Kennedy and I need to get Cornell West. You know what I'll do, Robert? I mean, yeah. Joe, you know what I'm going to do, Joe? I'm going to do that. Okay. Is that right. okay? Is that I'm, okay I'm, with I'm, you, Joe? Thank you. I am positive. I am very happy that you said that. Okay, no, let, no, let, listen, I am, look, no, I love Cornell West. I love Cornell West. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I didn't mean to speak over you. I think we had a little delay. Go ahead, Joe. 
No, uh, what I'm saying is I think I'll enjoy my radio station again when I when I see it actually doing something they used to do all the time. Bring other voices, bring those voices on that nobody else uh, will bring on. CNN won't bring on MSNBC. Now we copy everything CNN does. It, it's ridiculous. Joe, did I bring on Marianne Wilson, Williamson or not? Sure, why not? No, I'm saying I did. No, 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 no. Wait, wait. I brought Mary. I played Marianne Williamson here, sir. Joe, I had Marianne Williamson on KPFT. Okay. You did, if, you, if you didn't hear it, I'm going to come to you and say, "Why weren't you listening to my show?" <laughs> It's hard for me to catch this hour, actually. You notice I'm driving right now. So. I know, I know. Anyway, Joe, let me, the, the phones are hanging on. Hey, Joe, get your friends to contribute to Politics Done Right, because right now I don't have any contributors. So I need contributors to call 713-526-5738, extension number one, to contribute. We are behind in like We haven't gotten a collection. I've given you a full show today. Folks, my brothers and my sisters, please call in now or go to kpft.org and support Politics Done Right on KPFT. You see, Joe called in and got his stuff. Folks, please give us a call. Hey, Joe, I got to go to another call. Okay, brother? All right. Take care. And everybody, get in there and donate. Thank you, Joe. All right, let's go to James real quick. Come on in, James. Hey, good morning, Egberto. Uh, I'm good morning. So I hope that means my voice carries some weight on this station. Uh, you're the reason why I got up this early. I love, I love your show. And yeah, I want to take you back off that, that last guy. I, I, I think it's unfair that Robert F. Kennedy is getting the treatment that he's getting. And that treatment is no treatment, especially from, from, uh, I, I think last time I called, you said you were going to speak with either a Robert F. Kennedy, uh, representative or a supporter. I'm curious how that conversation went. Uh, well, it didn't look, I don't agree with, with, uh, Kennedy, uh, because of things with the vaccine and things with women's rights, et cetera. But again, um, it's not about me, right? What did, he, what, I, what did he do wrong about women's rights? What does that mean? When I say, well, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, women's rights. I, I meant the abortion issue. Okay. But, but all of you are right. Okay. And first of all, let me, let me just give a mea culpa here. I just didn't want, I have, when I interview these guys, I'll make sure and do it the, the right way. In my opinion, that is to make sure that the things that I disagree with, I put it out there and challenge them. But um, it, it, it is wrong for me just to say I am not going to give an audience a hearing on these folks. So Joe was absolutely right. OK. OK. Yeah, I, I just it's sad that he's not getting um, the proper attention and I think the proper respect, because, I mean, he's still polling pretty well. He's still at what, 20 percent. I mean, well, that's it, like a board. He's Look, Joe serious. makes a Joe makes an important point, and you as well. Look, guys, I am going to I'm going to go to their to their rep and and see if they're they 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 will do it. They may listen to some of the things that I say and just say no, I don't want to come on, but I'll give it the shot, and I promise to give it a full shot because of you, James, Joe, and everybody else who tells me uh, tells me this. Okay, so I'll do that. Okay. All right. All right, brother. You have a great week. Take care, brothers. All right, let's go to Harry real quick, and then I got to do a quick pitching, guys. Harry. Uh, buenos dias, Alberto. Buenos dias, uh, birthday you? boy. I got. I beat you to it. Uh, okay, birthday boy. Shout out to you and to Howard and to Jack. Well, I've been listening to these callers, and I and and as far as uh, Joe Biden's concerned, yeah, he's a lot of people feel he's too old, he's too boring. I didn't vote for him. I've told you that on previous shows, but he has done some progressive things. I still hold things against him when he was senator Biden. I can't go into that because I know we gotta you gotta move I, along I gotta cut here. You off in Thirty so seconds, Harry. As long as the economy 
if the economy doesn't have a huge slowdown or what Professor Richard Wolf, what he's always talking about on economic update, if we don't have a big slowdown in the economy, I think Joe Biden will get another four years. But I'm going to vote for Cornell West because he's very progressive. I heard a lot of his speeches. I like the way he talks. He's a believer in what Dr. King believed in. And okay, I, I don't mean to cut you, but I got to go pitch, brother. I have to go pitch. But Harry, thank you for calling. Thank right, you for we'll always talk, being we'll there for us. more later. All right, brother. Take take care. Hey, guys, uh, please give us a call at 713-526-5738. Uh, we need the contributions. I'm at a big donut hole right now, and I am pretty sure uh, our manager here is going to say, Egberto, do I really need to keep you on air if you can't bring in a dollar to support the hour that you're on every morning at 6 o'clock? Uh, and I'm not kidding here, right? Um, and I, I'll tell everybody straight up. Um, if I am here at KPFT every hour, taking up an, an entire hour slot, and this hour slot is not paying for the hour that it has, while a music show is paying for three or four hours of one slot that they have, and if a manager comes in and say, you know what, the people, what the people want from KPFT is music, not your wordiology, not your politics, not talking or getting them to talk, uh, what can I, how, what kind of an argument can I give to the manager when they tell me we got to stay alive on air? So I, I am very, uh, I, look, that is just how it is. That's, that's a reality. Progressives and all those that are listening to this program, many of you have a lot of money. That is the truth. And many of you go ahead and get coffees and do a lot of things and pay your cable bills, etc. All I'm asking my brothers and my sisters, Keep us on air. If you like this program, now, if you don't like this program, don't send a penny, right? And they'll summarily take me off and say, well, Egberto, you're not paying your bills, and I will go back and I'll do my internet show solely. I'm still doing my internet show, by the way. I just, that's all I would do. But unless we get these calls to support the program, to $100 for my uh, the Politics and Right t-shirt, $100 for the summer sizzle t-shirt. You don't have to pay this all at once. You can pay it in increments. Uh, $250 for have coffee with Egberto. We'll go out for some coffee. I promise you a good time. I promise you a good time. Or just give whatever you can. 713-526-5738, extension number one. Or go to kpft.org. You must say that it's in the name of Politics Done Right so that it'll be credited to the show. Remember that I am solely a volunteer. Most of us are volunteers here. We don't get paid. Whenever you're given to Politics Done Right, you're just saying this slot deserves to stay uh, with this particular program. So once again, I ask you to call 713-526-5738, extension number one, to give whatever you can. And please, please make sure to say it's for Politics Done Right. I'm going to throw this to... Uh, to Howard right now and uh, for a closer and whatever pitch he wants. That's right, folks. If you think this show is important, and it is, it tells the truth. It tells a different way of politics and how to do politics right. Support us, 713-526-5738, extension 1. And also remember, for every $1,000 that we collect, we also will buy a backpack and some supplies for the Fifth Ward Head Start program. So keep that in mind. You're not just supporting KPOT. You're supporting the Head Start program. And I'm going to turn this over to Jack here for his last comments. Yes, yes, please donate. You know, you like these programs and you listen to them, please donate. Thank you. But thank you so kindly, guys. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics and Right. I want to thank Howard and Jack in the studio. My name is Egberto Willis, Politics and Right. And you know, hand this baby. I am what? Out. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.